Today we're in the P-51D or TF-51 from DCS. If you've never played DCS but you're at all interested in flight sims, I highly recommend downloading it. You get a free model to fly, the TF-51, which is just the unarmed version of the 51D, and it's an absolute blast. Especially if you have VR. VR in flight sims is an absolutely amazing experience. It's better than anything else out there right now in my opinion. And DCS has fully clickable cockpits that work in conjunction with your touch controls. What that means is that instead of mapping 56 buttons to a joystick and trying to remember all those key bindings to fly the thing, you can just forget about all that and fly with just a stick in one hand and a touch controller in the other. And you can click everything intuitively in your cockpit with just those touch controllers. It's incredibly immersive and just downright fun, and it's kind of tough for me to go back to IL-2 after this if I'm being honest. I do map the throttle and RPM to the POV hat on the stick as well as the flaps because uh, those three controls are a little bit awkward without doing that, but that's about it. Everything else is done on the touch controllers. All right, let's go ahead and get into this quick and no nonsense. The first thing we want to do is look to our left elbow, and you'll see this yellow lever. You want to go ahead and pull that yellow lever all the way up, which will bring your flaps up once the engine starts, and move your carburetor air control lever forward. Next, you come to the covers for the radiator and oil coolant controls. If you have those uh, black covers flipped up, it'll put the uh, switch in the automatic position. You'll want to go ahead and dial your rudder to the 5 o'clock or the five degree position. And you'll come down here and you'll see your fuel shutoff valve. You want to switch that to on. Now you go ahead and switch your RPM up all the way as far as possible. And you'll want to go ahead and turn on your batteries. It's the first two levers on the top left. That'll put on your cockpit lights. You can turn those off if you wish. And you can go ahead and put on your wing light. Turn on the radio. Channel A is usually dialed into the uh, comm station tower. And you'll go ahead and switch your magnetos to both. After this, you'll go ahead and turn your fuel booster on. Excuse me. Lift up the cap on the starter switch. And we'll go ahead and press on the mic, which is actually the button on the end of your throttle. And I use voice attack for this. I'm just going to go ahead and radio to the station, um, asking for takeoff permission. And again, if you have a touch controller, you don't have to worry about key mapping any of this to your keyboard. Um, you can just use that controller as a virtual hand and flip any switches you need in the cockpit as if you were really there. And because we're cleared, we'll go ahead and flip up the primer for a few seconds to get it juiced. Let go of that, and then we'll go ahead and flip the starter. And as soon as you hear that engine start to turn over, you'll come over to this red handle, which is your fuel mixture knob, move it down to run, and you'll feel it kick over completely then. Oh, one other thing, uh, you do want to have your parking brake on before you do all this. I didn't do it in this example, but just to show you how, you would pull the parking brake out, press down on your brake, let go of your brake, and let go of the parking brake handle. And just press the brake again to release it. It's just a good idea to have on. Um, whenever you uh, are doing startup procedures. You'll go ahead and throttle up just a hair and your plane will start moving. And you just control your plane with your rudders. So we're gonna give it a little bit of right rudder here. I'm gonna cut back on the throttle to slow down just a hair. And if you wanna make sharp turns when you're taxiing, you um, actually can go ahead and press uh, your left or right brakes. It has independent brake control. So like, let's say you wanted to make a sharp left turn when you're taxiing you would go left on the throttle and press hard left on the brake and you'll swing a little bit faster. Uh, you also want to keep your joystick pulled back while you're taxiing. Uh, that locks your tail wheel from moving more than six degrees left or right. If you had your uh, joystick pushed forward, your wheel would come unlocked and you would uh, swing around. It's, it's easier to spin out. So just keep that joystick pulled back a little. Now that we're in our start position for taking off, we want to throttle uh, back all the way to where we stop and we'll go ahead and roll up our uh, canopy. Pull the uh, joystick back again so your tail wheel stays locked, and I like to go ahead and throttle up about halfway. Uh, you're gonna have to put in very minimal rudder input. You might have to correct a little bit to the right, but because you had that five degree rudder trim, it should be manageable. Let off the stick at 70 miles per hour, and at 100, you'll start to take off. Now, you'll notice here, your plane is going to immediately drop. It'll drop either left or right, and you just want to correct for that with the joystick. Here in this case, it dropped left. So I just pull right a little bit on my joystick very minutely to correct for that. And your plane will just continue to take off automatically. Don't pull back on that joystick and try to take off yourself. The P-51 uh, is, is a very good plane when it comes to uh, just, just lift off. Now 
Now once you're airborne, you'll want to go ahead and lift up that lever at the bottom left. That's your gear. You'll see the light switch red, which means it's in transition, and then when the light goes away, it means your gear is up. Flip off our wing light. And we're also going to turn our rudder trim back, not quite to zero, uh, maybe just a half a degree so to the right. Uh, just because the torque from the propeller is going to pull you a little bit left, you want to counteract that with just a slight bit of right rudder. Very minute, though. And now we're going to go ahead and get to cruise speed. Um, doesn't really matter. I mean, you can't overheat the engine, so you don't want to have your RPM full or your throttle full. Usually, if you put it at about 27 RPM and uh, between 50 and 55 for your manifold pressure, which is controlled by your throttle, you're good. So you see me doing that here now, just adjusting that. You may also notice that the artificial horizon is off, so I turn that knob to switch it uh, once I'm at a level position, and it just resets it. So where I was at that level position flying, I went ahead and, and caged it, and it was just a reset for the artificial horizon. You also need to be aware of the location of your fuel gauges. There's one right here at your right foot, and one right here at your left foot. Uh, and that is corresponding to the fuel tank on your left wing and your right wing. Now let me pause this. If you look in front of your joystick towards your feet, right in the middle, you will see your fuel tank selector. And you'll see that red switch right now is on your main tank left-hand side. So what's going to happen is, is your left hand, uh, your left wing fuel tank is going to slowly uh, dissipate. And when it goes down to zero, you'll want to switch it over to your right-hand tank. To do that, you'll take your fuel, sh fuel shutoff valve, switch it to off very quickly, and then switch that lever all the way to the main tank RH side. Then you'll put your fuel shutoff valve back on. Um, some people may not be aware of that if they're not familiar with the flight mechanics of the P-51, so I wanted to throw that in there. Now, landing is just one of those things you have to get a feel for. The old adage, practice makes perfect, is true in this case. Um, there are a few simple rules, though, that you should follow when you uh, try to learn how to land, and if you follow them correctly, you should get to that point where you can do it flawlessly much quicker. Uh, the first thing you want to do is set your manifold pressure to 25, which I've done here, and your RPM to 27. It looks like we're already set there. Then we want to bring our altitude down to about 1,000 feet. I'm at 1,500 here, so I'm going to want to bring it down just a little bit. Now, while I'm working on that, I want to make sure my aircraft is also trimmed properly. We don't want the aircraft to be drifting left or right. We don't want it to be, uh, we don't want the aircraft to have a, a natural nose up attitude or nose down attitude. You want it to be set very neutral, so make sure that trim is correct once you get down to 1,000 feet and you're uh, approaching straight at the runway. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on that. I'm gonna speed it up and you just follow that flat path once you get to 1,000. Your speed should level out at about 250 miles per hour, which if you look at the gauge, that's where we're at now. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed up. Okay, so now we're getting close to the end of the runway. You can see we're at 1,000 feet, 250 miles per hour, manifold still at 25, RPM still at 27. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead, excuse me, and start to take a slow turn. We're going to want to go 180 degrees at the end of this turn from where we were originally over the runway to where we're running parallel with the runway when we look out to our left window. Um, and one thing just that you can take uh, ease with in knowing is that once you set that manifold pressure and once you set that RPM, once you get to that altitude, you don't have to worry about adjusting anything else as far as, as throttle, RPM, uh, altitude, etc. You just have to do everything else by eyeball, which it kind of makes things a little more uh, uh, easier, really, when you think about it. So we're just coming out of this turn right now, and you're going to want to make it very wide if you notice that turn was extremely wide. And when you look out your left window, you want to see that wingtip align perfectly with the runway. And you just want to run parallel with it until the very end. You'll also notice from our airspeed indicator that we're below 200 miles per hour. So we can go ahead and drop that lever to let our landing gear come down. You'll see the red light, meaning the gear is coming down. And when it switches to green, you know it's down completely and locked into place. We'll continue down this runway. And right when this wing gets to the end of the runway, we're going to go ahead and drop our flaps to marks. And you can see that on the wing right now. The flaps have came down a little bit. You actually couldn't see me look at the flaps and put the lever down because I have it uh, key mapped and didn't need to look at it. But we'll just continue forward until we get to a 45 degree angle from the end of the runway. So I'll speed up.
And now that we're approaching 45 degrees, I'm going to go ahead and start that slow, wide turn to bring it around. Again, you want to maintain altitude at about 1,000 feet. If you drop a little at this point, it's okay. I mean, this is your final, so that's fine. Just do what comes natural. But just try to make that turn wide enough to where when you come out of it, you're lined up perfectly with the runway and you can make any adjustments you need. When you get about halfway through the turn, I like to drop the flaps all the way down. You'll see that reflected in the wing. Still coming through that turn. We're at about 130 miles per hour. And now's the point where you want to drop your manifold pressure to about 20. Um, ideally, you want to be about 120, 110 miles per hour when you're getting this close to the runway. And putting that manifold pressure at 20 is a good spot to place it to get you there. So we're just aiming for the very start of the runway. We want that nose to line up right with the very start of the runway. We're descending slowly, watching our speed. We're at 110 miles per hour. And then right when you get over the runway, you want to drop the manifold pressure back to 15. Now, it's tempting to cut the throttle all the way. You don't want to do that. The reason you don't want to do that is because that tends to make your aircraft drop and stall early, and then when you hit the ground, you bounce off of it hard. So let's go ahead and resume the video. And as you get over that runway, you also want to bring the nose up. You want a nose up attitude. The reason being is it's a tail dragger and you'll bounce if your front wheels touch first. You want all three wheels to touch at the same time. Just slowly glide and land. Now when you land, you shouldn't have to apply any brake. You should apply very minimal rudder just to keep yourself from uh, going off course and look for an exit uh, to take your uh, craft off of. Open up your canopy and just slightly adjust the throttle. You know, if you're going too fast, cut it back. If you need to go faster, push it forward. And just go to you find, find the uh, exit ramp you need to take. Okay, so here we are at our exit ramp. We're going to go ahead and apply right rudder. And we'll apply left at the turn up here until we get to our parking spot. Now when we come here to park, we want to swing it around. Uh, the way to do that is we're going to go ahead and cut our throttle back. And then we're going to push our stick forward so our wheel unlocks and it allows us to swing around. And we're going to apply that right rudder hard maybe a little bit of brake, and then apply both brakes right as we come around. And there we are, stopped. Now we want to go ahead and start the engine shutoff procedures. The very first thing you want to do is engage that parking brake, pull the brake out, press the brake down, release the brake, let go of the press, uh, parking brake handle, your brake is engaged. You want to go ahead and cut your RP, or push your RPM all the way forward, and push your throttle up to about 15 RPM. Go ahead and open these flaps and set them back to neutral. Make sure all your trim is back to neutral. And go to idle cutoff on your fuel mixture. Now we can set off the fuel booster, cover the starter switch, take your magnetos off, turn off the fuel shutoff valve, lock up your uh, joystick, release your hydraulic pressure, turn off your batteries, and your tail light if you had it on. Jump out. Walk away like a badass. Official Mustang pilot.